All right, welcome to another Salem Doodles podcast. Back Thank here you. with Amanda Zachary. Cheers to you. Cheers. Um, so Amanda Zachary of Amanda Zachary YouTube fame. <laughs> oh Instagram yeah. Instagram and all that. Z-A-K-I. Oh yeah. If you're an F list celebrity. No, I'm an F list. You're like. I'm like a Z list. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. So, what I wanted to talk to you about today. And we're going to just jump right into yeah, it, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, you've done a little bit of both now. What do you prefer? I mean, like, you haven't really been on a catamaran full-time. You've done a couple charter catamarans, so you know what it's like. But what do you I'd prefer? say do a catamaran, well, for three months. Yeah, but that was an old piece of shit catamaran, too, so. Okay, okay. Uh, so it doesn't count. <laughs> well, it did have air conditioning. It didn't have a generator. It was a piece of crap. It, uh, I mean, it was just, it needed a lot of work. It didn't sail very well. Anyway, but uh, but you've been on a couple of charters since then with me. So what sure. do you what do you prefer, boat life or RV life? Okay, we have had this conversation actually, mm-hmm. and it's not super straightforward for me. It's not black and white because perfect scenario, and we can make it more black and white. But for me, I really like a combination of all of it. I if I had it my way. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are like this, too. I would, you know, I'd have a place on land. I would travel by RV. I'd travel by boat. So I'd just go where I want, when I want, how I want. That's that's the dream for me. But if you couldn't do all three, if you had to pick between boat life or RV life. Okay. 100% of the time. Or just majority or something. They just each have pros and cons. Uh Uh-huh. Um so tough I am I, feeling the cigar today I'm going to put that up yeah. okay yeah, I'm just not feeling it but uh, um, I I want to say boat life I do um, but you're not gonna I think I am going to if I'm on a nice comfortable boat I do really like being on the water and traveling all over the world, not being restricted and just traveling domestically, but the RV life is really comfortable and it's a bit easier. Feels very natural. It's significantly easier. Yeah. I mean, like, I always tell people, like, on a boat, everything's twice as hard. Um, you know, because, like, right now, if we, you know, you know, needed toothpaste, well... Luckily, you're right here at Spanish Wells. There's a, there's a shop that's going to have it, but they're only open 9 to 5, right? So if it's 7 p.m., you're like, I don't, you know, there's no CVS to go to. Plus, you'd have to jump in the dinghy and then go ashore, find a place to tie up the dinghy, and then walk to wherever you're going and doing that. Whereas, like, if you're home, you know, maybe just get in your car, drive up, park front row at CVS, grab your shit, and head out. And, you know, there's just all kinds of other considerations you have to take into account with a boat. So it's, it's definitely harder. It's twice as hard to do anything. If you're cooking, right? Uh, especially if you're underway. I mean, the boat's moving and all that, and you have, generally have a smaller kitchen area, and it's more compact, and you have to make do with more, more stuff. Whereas in an RV, you know, it depends on how you travel, too. Like, if, you know, we, we pull a trailer with a motorcycle, so we just hop on the motorcycle and go. It's not quite as easy as going in a car, but it's definitely easier than hopping in a dinghy, you know. Sure. But, I don't know. But uh, the downside of an RV, though, is that, you know, like, you don't get to see this. Exactly. That is the downside. And if I was on a boat full time, I would need breaks. Otherwise, I'd go crazy. I would choose the RV every day of the week, it, opposed to like, you know, a hundred percent of the time on a boat. If it's actually one hundred percent of the time, you can't take breaks on land or something like that. Well, I, yeah, you can't do that. I mean, I always tell people. I mean, there's people that live on their boat full time, but I mean, like, a hundred percent of the time. I don't know how they do it, though. But, like, I always tell people, after three months on the boat, I need to get off the boat. After six months on the boat, I need to get the F off the boat. Right. And so, I mean, even just a week or something like that in a in a house or an Airbnb or something is enough. Mm-hmm. But you need a little break. Yeah. I agree with that. You have to kind of recharge. Uh, so, okay. So, say you could do boat and RV. Mm-hmm. What percentage would you do what? I might actually be in the RV a little bit more than I'd be on the 
boat because it would kind of be a home base. And then I would just go travel internationally, cruise around when I felt like it. I don't know. We need a percentage. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, like, I I haven't thought this through. Depends on what part of the world you're in. I mean, like, cruising season in the Caribbean and most people that are leaving the States, you know, it's November through May or June. And so, which is actually, you know, that's actually a pretty good time to be out of an RV, too. Because there's not too many, other than Florida, where else you're going to go in, like, January. So that's like 50, 60% of the year you're on the boat in that yeah. case. Yeah. And that sounds reasonable. Well, I mean, like, so, but you can break it up. You could do November through, you know, April on the boat. And then, right. And then May, do the summer in the RV. And then, and then uh, you know, you probably want to be out of the RV. It depends on where you are. I mean, like, you know, October, November. I could really do something like that. Yeah. Like a 50-50 split, but going back and forth that's pretty good all right so what's the from a female perspective what is the biggest negative about being on a boat eh. My is I you should ask me these questions beforehand yeah, what's so your honest opinion so yeah but i would love time to think about it um what's first reaction? hardest thing about being on a boat well, the first thing that came to mind mm-hmm. was actually that I feel like I'm not helping that much. Well, and you are helping, but I mean that's something that just takes time to to. It's been what five months. Yeah, but we've been <laughs> hopping around on a bunch of different boats and all that. If we were on the same boat the whole time, you would definitely have it down and all. And that. I mean, I can help as a deck hand on some level, but you know, the boat requires so much more than that. Every day, you're probably putting in a couple hours at least of, or on average, a couple hours of work that I'm not having to put in. You know, you're dealing with things going wrong, like maintenance issues, um, electrical troubleshooting. You you can pick up the slack in other areas. I mean, like, you know, like, okay, if I've been working on the generator for two hours, you could be cleaning up inside or doing something in there, organizing or something. Yeah. So we need to get, well, we finally got you an editor for your channel so that, because like, you know, me, I edit, I'm still, I'm editing my own videos right now, but like, it takes me four or five hours to edit a video and I'm done. Whereas you, it takes a bit longer. And so like, you've been working a lot lately doing that instead of being able to do other stuff. And working on um, some other things as well. Yeah. And then, I mean, and don't underestimate how much time the channel Sailing Doodles actually takes to, like, we actually do have to get off the boat and film content and stuff every day. I got to get ready and, or not. Sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. And then just, like... You know, we're in a relationship, also maintaining our relationship. Oh, yeah. You, going on a date, whatever we ought to do. You know, it's kind of like... Well, we just, we can, we killed two birds with one stone right there. We went into lunch. <laughs> yeah, That's I know. Was, we go on dates all the time. Like, spending time together. You know what I mean, though. It's, there's actually a lot going on. Yeah. There's actually a lot going on. Um, outside of just editing. Yeah. So I what, agree, though. I could be, I'm like... I'm about to go clean up the mess that we made yeah, earlier. So steward soap stuff. That spilled it and got crap everywhere. That's going to be nice. Uh, we can't use too much water though, because I didn't bring, I didn't fill up those extra. So we had like a bottle of soap spill. That's going to you know be hard. You know, it's just got to clean it up. But with this boat, only holds 45 gallons of water. So see, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. You're thinking about this. You're handling this. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh dang, eh. <laughs> I. <laughs> Uh, sorry, keep going, though. I cut you off. Only holds 40 No, I'm, yes. I mean, like, we can't... I mean, I guess it shouldn't be too bad, because I'm only rolling on... I'm going to only be on the boat two nights. So tonight, mm-hmm. tomorrow night, you're going home tomorrow. And then, so tonight, tomorrow night, and then I'll be in the marina the next night, so then I'll have water. Um, Ooh. I have another good one. What's that? So, and this is something I've actually talked to a lot of female... Female cruisers about. Um... They tend to like splitting their time a little bit more because they want want or need to see their family. It, usually, it's grandkids and their children that they want to spend time with, and not you have husbands. A lot of grandkids? 
Not me. Not me. Might don't know about. No, just the cruisers we run into. And we, it's kind of something that has come up a lot lately. Lately, like how much time do you spend on the boat? How much time do you want to spend on the boat? Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing, I'm noticing a theme where the men seem to want to be on the boat all the time, and the women want to go visit their kids and grandkids and all of that. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's not. I don't want to say it's not a want. It's more of a need. I need to go visit my your grandkids? My mom. Oh. No. My mom on a pretty regular basis. And that's tricky if you're on the boat. Yeah. Taking time away to keep up with your family. and. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's... The, well, because we were talking about earlier. Like, who was that? I was asking this. Oh, somebody... So we're doing um, uh, patron live chats and channel member live chats lately uh, on, on the Sailing Doodles channel. So what we've been doing is... When we're underway, we just throw up our phone into a live chat and mm-hmm. everybody kind of see us do stuff. Somebody's asking about dogs and like that, that was kind of thing. I don't know how I got onto this topic, but it was kind of like, you know, having that, uh, I don't even know how I got on, why that occurred to me, but it, you know, it's like, it sort of takes so much extra time to do with that. And then, you know, uh, so it's kind of like dealing with the family stuff too. I don't know. I mean, um, I sort of see how they're, yeah, they both. I don't want to say complicates things because those are both such wonderful things. Having a dog, having your family, <laughs> those are both great things. But if you live on a boat, they can be actually really hard to navigate. Yeah. Things, uh, the logistics around it. I'd like, I mean, like, people always ask, like, I mean, I, I would love to get a, a dog again, but it's a. Uh, it's not so much having them on the boat. That's the hard part. Like, that I could deal with. I could deal with taking them to shore three or four times a day. Like, that's not a big deal. Yeah, that's not the problem. It's, it's, being able to, you know, so we're flying home. You're flying home tomorrow. I'm flying home two days later. What would we do with the dogs at that point? You know, we'd have mm-hmm. to uh, either get somebody to dog sit them, which is basically not. I mean, how, how are you going to find somebody down here to do that? I mean, because it'd be one thing if you you made you made friends with somebody that would be willing to help watch your dog, but I mean, like they're probably going to be moving on their boat, and you know, so if you're gone for a month. Well, how are you going to catch up with them to get your dog back? You know what I mean? Nobody sits there still that long enough. And, I don't know, and then traveling out on the airlines with them is very difficult. Yeah, you can only fly eight hours, is that right, with a dog in the main cabin? So, uh, that's what we've heard anyway. Well, the, the main thing is, I mean, so if you're doing international, yeah, that comes into play. So then if you're going to go to Europe or something like that or Asia and all that, you got to do... Somewhere that's less than eight hours, because that's all the dogs allowed to be. You in have to stop, and then you check them into that country and deal with all of that mm-hmm. a possible quarantine. So it's say you do want to come home from Asia, yeah. you're stopping in Europe, or, and or wherever, mm-hmm. and like, I mean that that would be tough. Yeah, stopping there, and do you have to quarantine there? I don't know. Yeah, and then getting on another flight just to get back. And that's expensive, too. I think, you know, I'd like to get dogs again. I would like to do a circumnavigation. So I think after the circumnavigation where we're just cruising around seasonally or whatever in the Caribbean. I mean, like, I'm talking like five, six years from now. So we've done a circumnavigation. Um, Yeah, I mean, if we're just going to go spend three or four or five, six months a year on the boat in the Caribbean, that's a lot easier because then you can just basically you can like I'd probably just like base the boat out of Puerto Rico. And then that's still America, so you don't have to do anything to get the dog in and out. You just go back and forth. Yeah. And then, um, you know, flying with them, it's only a three-hour flight from Miami or three and a half or something. So, But the other issue is, is like, okay, if they're over a certain size, like, they can't fly in the cabin, you know. And so it's, like, kind of limiting on what kind of dog you can get. The one solution we've thought of, to aside, I mean, I see what you're saying with ba- being raised in Puerto Rico and just not doing some of the um, more extensive traveling we've discussed. But, you know, we talked about we are planning to cross South Pacific, and then once we're over there, it would be extremely difficult to get a dog back. So we one thing we did talk about, but I don't think we would do it, is getting a dog that just stays with the boat. So we have, say we have two other crew members that are with us, and we alternate when we fly home or... Yeah, take breaks. And I would. I mean, but I would feel bad about leaving like the dog. I don't know. I know. I know. That yeah. would be tough. All right, my nose is like so itchy here. No, it's the bugs. You think it's the bugs? No, I don't know. It's fine. 
She got she got attacked by bugs here. She, Devoured. She had me take a naked photo of her earlier of just bug bites everywhere. It's like Nat Geo style. It's like, we'll, look how crazy we'll, this is. We'll put that on the screen right now. No, I'm kidding. If you're squeamish, you would no. not want to. Look away. Yeah. No, we didn't do that. So no, if you're just no. listening, we didn't do that. You're not no, missing no. anything. Um, but, yeah. But, so you, we, were, we, were, we were talking about it at lunch today, too, about the new crew thing. So... What we're thinking about doing is putting kind of an open call out there. I know Delos has done it before where you're like, hey, send me a send send us a so we'll probably end up doing something like that. We'll be like, hey, we're looking for two people. A couple would be great, but we're open to talking about whatever. And, you know, be crew and help film and edit and do all that. It could be a compensated position depending on their level of contribution and all that. And it could turn into something longer term. Yep. Just to kind of help out, because like, I mean, today, like getting off the dock, like we needed both of us to get off the dock. There, was, we need a third person to film that, and so we didn't get to film us getting off the dock because of that. We miss out on a lot like that, Man. and so that's why we'd like something like that. Plus, it just makes it easier with other things. So, and also in the future, say, you know, I mean, way down the road, you may want to take a little time off. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. might want someone who can help with editing and yeah. So we're thinking about doing something like that. We'll probably we'll just ask them to send it. Say so that that's the main thing too. Is that I tried doing something similar on glamping doodles, where I was like, because when I started glamping doodles, the original chant, the original thought behind that channel was, is that I had that class CRV. It was not very expensive, and I was going to try to build the channel up and then find somebody to take the channel channel over, and they would get the RV and then they would continue doing all this, you know. Uh, start making all the footage and everything and and so i put a, a video out i was like asking for people like hey you know i mean you can get you can win this rv you can take over the channel and do all that and blah 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 and like just i got very i mean almost no good applications and it was like a lot of it was like i you know i asked specifically for them to send me a link to a youtube video and a lot of the people just weren't they couldn't even understand the, the simple the simple instructions like I'm if you're gonna send me a file I'm not opening it I'm sorry I'm not doing that yeah you have to send me a link to a YouTube channel pay attention to detail when you want a yeah. job you have to make sure you follow instructions very very closely yeah. otherwise you're not even gonna open it yeah yeah so uh, we, we may do something like that I mean you know yeah. I mean I guess we're kind of saying that now so if you're a, a savvy enough sleuth to figure out how to send me an email with a link, go ahead. I think we should create a separate inbox for it, yeah. like um, new crew at sailingdoodles dot com yeah. or something. That's not actually an email address at the moment, but <laughs> yeah. Um, oh man, uh, sorry, <coughs> choking on my beer. <laughs> right. So speaking of this beer is empty, I'm gonna go get another one. But the good thing is my mic stays with me. Oh, true. Well, I can hold it down anyway. What, but what were we talking about? Oh yeah, auditions or not auditions? I come from like the entertainment industry so in my mind it's like that's an audition but i mean it kind of is an audition it I mean, is you don't have to call it's, it that it's but. just a well you're sending in your demo reel yeah you know i mean you're you're uh i mean you know so show us you know if you have some editing and computer type savvy skills show us something if you know you're just showing off your personality or whatever you, you can do that too i mean like i'm not opposed to somebody that doesn't know how to edit or film or anything like that obviously you know compensation varies depending on their level of, i mean like if they can just step in and they can already edit and do all that stuff and i don't have to teach them or show them well that's a big leg up for you but if their personality and their you know the way they come across on video is is like amazing then I'm, i'd be willing to teach somebody how to do all that stuff yeah for sure yeah. i understand I mean, that we get pretty close to these boats here <laughs> yeah you um, know you see so like this boat is probably it's not not uh, ideal. Are we gonna hit him? Uh, no, but we're like fifteen feet away. Not even that now. I feel like we're getting closer. Yeah, we're getting pretty close to this boat. But they're swing. Wait. They're swinging this way. We're swinging the other way. But yeah. Uh, so I was talking about putting fenders out. I don't know. Should we? I think like, we're should okay. We consider it? I think we're okay. Um, I mean, we're we're a good twelve feet right now, and I don't think we're getting any closer. Maybe. I was, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> yeah, I think we're getting closer. Yeah. Oh, they're right. starting to. Swing the uh, yeah. I don't know. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> We're maybe ten feet now, but so they're yeah. They're well, coming for us. 
when we pulled up to this mooring, uh, like All right. I think we're starting to go different ways now. But we're like eight feet away right now. Look at this. Um, the dinghy's going to hit. The dinghy will hit their boat, yeah. Um, okay. And we have contact. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dinghy has... Dinghies are thunder right now. Just want to make sure our motor doesn't hit them. Um, yeah. It's all right. We're going away now. <laughs> but our dinghy did. So, like, when we pulled up to uh, this mooring ball... These guys were already here, and uh, they were like, how long is this boat? I'm like, I'm 34, and they're like, okay. Hi. Uh, just checking. It's okay, but we got a little close. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll move the dinghy a little forward. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that. It's fun to, we get fiberglass to fiberglass. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, before we get to that, we'll pull this up here a bit. There were some bigger boats that didn't work in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I think kidding. it's like a 40-foot max or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is only 34, so... Well, when the wind picks up tomorrow... If it gets windy, everybody's yeah. in the same direction. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Cheers. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, I guess we got that sorted. Yeah, swinging back <laughs> the other way now. Um, but, yeah, it, uh, these mooring balls are pretty close together. I think it's like a 40-foot max. Like, most moorings that... Uh, like most moorings in like the Virgin Islands and all that have a 60 foot max. And that has to do with like how far the, the mooring balls are apart. Because, you know, if there's no wind, you could just be going all different directions. So, but these boats are more than 40 feet. No, so they're about 40. You think, well, they're okay. pretty small. No, I bet you that, I don't know, these are the PDQ passage makers. I don't even know what they are, but I bet you that's only 35, 38 feet. Well, then there's a. A whole different problem here because, like, the max length should be lower if the boats are hitting, right? Well, they're not hitting. That's the thing. They're they're getting close, but they're not hitting. Okay. So they said there was like a forty footer in here the other day that was getting pretty close, but it's also kind of well. No, there is wind. It's just it's kind of wind blocked here, so the wind's coming from this way or from and over those trees. So like we're not getting affected by the wind down here. Mm -hmm. We're getting affected by the current and occasionally a gust will come in and move a, move a boat. So yeah. <laughs> I think we're okay. Are you going to cut all that out? No, really, why not? Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that in, but yeah, so we are in Spanish Wells right now, uh, headed home for the, uh, Eclipse. The Texas Eclipse Festival. Yeah, so we are headed to the Texas Eclipse Festival. Um, we're we got media credentials there, so we're going to be covering that. So we're going to put. You're that, welcome. Yeah, we're going to put that on our Glamping Doodles channel. Um, should be fun. So come see us at the Texas Eclipse Festival. It'll be fun. I'm really excited because I was able to coordinate some cool interviews. I mean, I don't want to jinx anything because it's not 100% confirmed. It's just, I'd say we're like. 90% there. Yeah. 80%. Um, with some really cool guests. So, um, hopefully you guys are interested in something like that because we wanted to bring really cool people on the podcast. And so I've been coordinating to bring on a couple really awesome guests. Yeah, we've already got, um, one of them's a, what, uh, uh she's a, uh, astronaut, astronaut? And aquanaut. Oh, aquanaut. What's the other one? He's a, he's also an astronaut. Technically he <laughs> films, um, he's a cinematographer and director at et cetera. And he, um, he films adventure stuff. So he's done a lot of like Nat Geo and PBS travel things but he's actually going to be filming something in space, or he already did. He did a documentary on space travel or something, and so he's technically an astronaut, but he's a filmmaker. Um, so both of us, so we have two, and then we have had Meow Wolf also. Yeah, so Meow Wolf is uh, so if you if you haven't checked out the latest Glamping Doodles video, uh, it shows so just G L A M P Glamping Glamorous Camping, Glamping Doodles. Uh, so we went. Before we left on a road trip, we went to Meow Wolf. Meow Wolf is a... It's an exhibition. It's, it's like an art like, installation. But like an experience. Yeah. It's like an interactive art Interactive. Experience. Absolutely. So the, the premise behind it is there's four of them. There's one in um, Vegas, Denver, Santa Fe, and Dallas. 
and they're they're all somewhat related. There's like a rift in the dimensions or something, and like so the the Santa Fe one and the Dallas one are very much similar. They're like a residential home that's like had a portal open up to another dimension, and so like you walk in like the fireplace, you the fire you walk into the you walk through the fireplace, and it opens up into a tunnel that leads to another dimension. It's pretty uh, cool. You open up the refrigerator and it re, you know goes to another refrigerator realm where there's like a dozen refrigerators that all lead to different places. It's kind of cool. It uh, is. Unfortunately, we went during spring, spring break. break. There's like so many kids. I've never seen so many kids. It was like going to a Chuck E. Cheese during spring yeah. break. It was a lot of kids. I did. I, I think the one in Dallas and in Santa Fe were kind of cool, but... I really like the one in Vegas the best mm, so far. Really? Yeah. What theme was that? So that one is a grocery store. Oh, cool. So you walk in, and it's, I think it's whatever they call it, something Mart. I forget what they call it. And, um, you know, it looks like a grocery store, but all the stuff they're selling in the grocery store is, like, really weird. Like, what? what? You know, it's like kind of like, wait a minute, who's buying, what, what is this? And you can actually buy stuff there. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Like, they say, if you can pick it up, you can buy it. But if you can't pick it up, then it's whatever. But then you go into like there's several different you know you open up the uh, you know the in the you go to the butcher shop and the grocery store and you open up the refrigerator door and it leads into some realm and then that's know, fun. So you do all or you know some of these yeah it's it's really cool. They're gonna have a pop up at the Texas Eclipse, yeah. Festival, Eclipse Festival, which is how we managed to do all this, set that up, and we'll probably chat with them and check it out. Yeah, should be pretty cool. But yeah. uh, looking forward to it, and then. So the Eclipse Festival is April 5th through the 9th. I guess the Eclipse is on the 8th, right? And they have a bunch of bands, including the band that we met at their concert. Yeah, we met through Sun Squabby. Yeah. And they are, yeah, they're performing there. Uh, Which is actually how I found out about this. But I think you knew about it anyway. You were already going to go. I was already researching where I wanted to go for the Eclipse. And I think this was my number one thing. But it's expensive. I mean, it's a little expensive. I think like a, a ticket is like four hundred bucks, and then if you get like I don't know, VIP is like six hundred. But then like you know, you gotta it's like a hundred bucks for your RV parking or something like that. It's it's a little expensive to go, but it you know they have like thirty bands and a bunch of like TED Talk type stuff and all the other stuff. So it should be pretty cool. Absolutely, I think um, it does seem like it'll be really cool. They have tons of interactive stuff. They have um, like you said TED Talk stuff. So they're all these incredible scientists pe- doing stuff yes that's the part I'm, I'm almost more excited about that than the music personally yeah it should be pretty cool yeah so we're gonna we're gonna go in a day early so we can like kind of get some video before it opens and maybe talk to a few people before it gets kind of crazy I imagine the first day we'll be able to talk to people too it won't be too crazy on the 5th when everybody's getting there so we'll get the, the 4th and the 5th to like talk to people and interview do some podcasts and stuff like that so we have a lot of cool new podcasts coming up Yes. So make sure to check it out. We we wanted to try to change things up a little bit. Yep. An aquanaut. Yeah, there you go. Well, we're basically aquanauts. What are you talking about? I mean, yeah, we stay on the surface. Yeah. For the most part, we're not really conducting research. I would consider this. I am conducting research. <laughs> Tr- trying to figure you out. Yeah, same. Uh, Me too. Uh, um, but yeah, so we're doing that, and then... So we're there till the 9th. I guess we're leaving on the 9th. I, I, I don't know. And then we booked our flights back here to the boat on April 12th. Mm-hmm. And then we'll head uh, over to another part of the Eleuthers for a bit. We got a friend coming down with his boat. We're going to hang out for a bit. And then uh, work our way up to the Abacos. And then we got going to... So I've already got two or three people that are interested in buying this boat. So if you are interested, uh, shoot me an email, um, you can go, or you go to our website uh, and and you can do that. Uh, and it's a uh, so I'm looking to have it sold around the middle of May, and we'll deliver it somewhere to Florida. I mean, if you're not in Florida, if you're somewhere else on the East Coast, we can talk about it. Like, but you know, if you're like up in North Carolina or something, be like, all right, if you pay for the fuel, we'll get it up there. But, you know, um, to, you know, we may do something like that. But, like, either that or then I'm going to park it. I've already, you know, I, I, I guess I need to get that solidified in the next few weeks because um, I need to book a marina in Florida somewhere if, if we don't have a sold by the time we get there. But I've had two or three people recently email me, so I'm hoping I have it um, 100% done before that. Uh, but, yeah, 
So it's exciting that we're to that point. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time coming. And then we just booked, what did we just book? We booked Europe. So we have the flotilla in Croatia, July 13th or 17th. Is that, that why I always get covered in hair? Is you just throw all your hair on the ground? I, d I try not to. I actually try to I go for the trash can or over here. But if I'm like, if I'm sitting here doing a podcast or something, I'm not going to hold on to it the whole time. You throw it off the back. I could, yeah. There you go. But I, I promise, don't you see me go around like collecting it, throwing it in the trash can and like. I swear I saw hair. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. There's your hair right up there. It still is everywhere, but have you not seen me go collect them? <laughs> I, I really try. There's hair over there. Either. And then I, I vacuumed out here the other day. You're like a labradoodle. I am. I know. I'm terrible. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I want it to stay on my head, I promise. Yeah. But uh, what do we say? Okay, so what do we book? What else? Do we, so what do we booked for Europe? Um... So we have, yeah, Croatia Flotilla is July, is that 13th or 17th? 13th. The 13th. And before that, we are going to get a camper van mm -hmm. and actually travel around Italy, which will be very exciting because um, that's when the Tour de France is. Yeah. So I'd, uh, I've got a, it's like a pop-up camper van, like it's a, uh, I don't know, just a van and and with a little pop top on it and so we rented one of those for three weeks from june 15th until july 5th yes. and then so the tour de france starts i want to say like june 29th or something like that uh so and it starts in italy so we'll see the first two or three legs of the tour de france and then uh go back to rome and turn it in and then we'll fly i haven't i need to start looking at boats if anybody has any ideas you can contact me um in either italy or france to to sail around from like july 6th through the 13th so excited for this trip yeah i've been dying to get to the med mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt no it's please right. continue <laughs> no so that's that's we're looking forward to doing that and i mean like those like that rv that camper van it was like it's like 100 bucks a day with insurance so it's really not too expensive um, to do that. Uh, I don't know. I originally had like a slightly bigger one. I had a, it was an RV, I guess, technically. It wasn't like a, so the one we're in now is like an actual van. Like you could make it a passenger van with a little pop top roof on it. The other one was like more like a class C RV, but not as big, like, like a class B, what you'd call it in the US. Uh, but you know, I think it was like something seven and a half feet wide and 23 feet long. And like, I already booked it and everything. And just the more I kind of looked into it, I'm like, man, that thing's just going to be too big. So I downsized to this van and it's 19 feet long and it is, uh, six, almost 6.9 feet. So it's just under seven feet. So it's a good eight inches narrower and three or four feet shorter. So I think it'll just be able to get into more places. So, and then we'll we'll stay in hotels occasionally too. Yeah. Um, just to be able to like take proper showers and all that kind of thing. That would um, be great. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I've never done it over there, and so we'll film that part for glamping doodles, and then the, the sailing stuff for sailing doodles, and then when we get back, uh, so we fly back to the states. I guess I need to book flights over there too. Um, uh, August. No, we fly Late back. July. So. May 15th is when we're planning to be off this boat. Um, and then we'll go back to Dallas for a few days, and then we'll hop in the RV, and we'll start heading kind of northish. And we're planning to be up in Michigan, like, mid-June, and leave the RV there at our friend's house. And then we'll sail to uh, fly to Europe. And right. I thought you meant the flight after Europe. Yeah, I thought. well, I haven't booked that either. So then we're no, so after Europe, we'll fly back to the U.S. on like July twentieth or something like oh, that. Okay. And then my family the, reunion, my family it, reunion is the next weekend. Oh yeah, it's the twenty sixth, right? Yeah, and then isn't the so it must be July thirteenth the flotilla, not thirteenth through the twentieth. Okay, I had seventeenth in my head again. I don't know where I keep getting this July seventeenth date. Thirteenth through the twentieth, um, and then. Um, we fly back to the States to my family reunion, and then uh, we'll get in the RV. Well, actually, my, we're going to go to the, my family reunion in the RV, and then we'll head west 
uh, uh, or late, late July, early August. Be at Burning Man by the end of August and then bring the RV back and put it away in September. And then I hope my new boat is delivered by mid-September somewhere. Um, Should be. Yeah. Um, I hope. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be kind of disappointed if it isn't because then it'll be more than a year late at that point. But we'll see. Uh, that means my, I need to text um, the manufacturer again. He was supposed to get back to me this week and hasn't. Same. But, yeah, that's our general travel plans. And then planning. I talked to the uh, president, uh, Bob Osborne, President Bob Osborne of the Salty Dog Association. And then we're going to do the Salty Dog Rally from Hampton, Virginia, or Norfolk there, to uh, the Caribbean. Yeah. And then... We were talking either, because they may do, the Salty Dog may do a spring rally back across over to Europe in 25. So I'm interested in that. Um, spring rally. Okay. Well, yeah. Cause I, oh, yeah. You were on the phone, too, when I was talking to him. So they're doing a, it'd be probably like in May. I was editing. And I was either April or May, they would cross the Atlantic back over to the Med. I, I'm not sure of the exact date. Something like somewhere around then. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we could do the, the med for the summer. Uh, and then, I don't know if we'd want to come back. I don't know. It depends on if we've had a fill of the med. The, the problem with the med, and I'm sure Europeans have the same problem with America, is that you only get 90 days. Oh, right. So in the Schengen zone... You only get 90. It's not like you get 90 days, leave, you get come back, you get another 90. It's 90 days out of the last 180. So you look back. So you, you cross into Europe and you look back 180 days. There can't have been more than 90 of those days out of the last 180 in Europe where, you're, you know, you're not allowed in. What can you do to extend that? What are the options? I mean, you can't, uh, other than getting a visa. Yeah, like, could you get a visa since we're technically working, we'd be working, we could be, like, promoting their, well, uh, some countries, like, travel. Um, I'll look into it, I don't know, but I mean, like, there are a few countries that, like, I know Greece, I even thought about doing it in Greece. Uh, I mean, it just didn't work out. Um, you can get a... Um, uh, digital nomad visa, mm -hmm. uh, but they still have, they make a lot of requirements because they want you to like for the digital nomad visa they they want you to be like the, I know for Greece they want you to stay in Greece not anywhere else in Europe they want you to stay in Greece for six months a year and they want you to have a year lease on an apartment there oh, and so like you have to have a yeah and I'm like well lease. I don't I don't want to do that I just want to be able to travel can um, you sublet it. I don't know, but they want, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you probably technically know, but you could, right? Right. Um, and then, you know, it costs like, I don't know, probably three or $4,000 to get that visa and all that. I just wish, I don't know. I mean, I get why they do it. I mean, the U.S. does it too, so like, that's why. But like, I wish they would come up with an easier way to get a longer visa. Like, I don't know, I guess I could look into it. I haven't really looked into it too much, so I don't know. Yeah, um, it sounds complicated, though. Because that so say we get to Europe in May, which is honestly not the best time to sail there. The best time to sail is is like June, July, August. Mm. Um, even maybe July, August, September, honestly. Dang. Um, and so if we get there in May, so then say we got there May 15th, right? Then we would actually need to leave by June, July, August 15th. We have to be out of there, which honestly, I don't know probably be ready for a break at that point too but I, then we couldn't go back for another three months so then you look at august so september october november oh it's every three months well so are you six uh, you, you can only be there three months out of the last six three months out of the last six okay okay so then so if we do may 15th just say may 1st for mass six so may june july then we'd have to be gone august september october so we couldn't come back till november 1st okay. by then who wants to be in europe in november right it's cold and shitty yeah um, you can go to the non Schengen countries. I believe, like, I think Cyprus is one of them, or you can go down to, like, uh, where you like Montenegro and, like, the um, Macedonia or something like that. Or, like, used to be Croatia wasn't in it, but ju just in the last year or so, you, now they're part of the Schengen zone. So, like, you can't even go to Croatia. I think you can go to Turkey. Turkey, you can go there. Or you can go down to, uh, 
Um, and, yeah, not out. What's one? Tunisia. I hear mm -hmm. that's not bad. Um, but you're just kind of limited on where you can go. We do have one other solution, but I have to, I need to put this on my to-do list actually. Um, I might be able to become a Czech citizen. Well, then we would have to be married. married. Yeah. <laughs> so. You guys heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah. So the alternative, I guess, would be <laughs> very elaborate. I even become then, a Czech citizen and we get married. Well, even then, I mean, like, even if you did work on, I, I, it's got to take more than a year to get your check. I would imagine that process takes a while. Yeah, I'm sure it's not. And I also have to figure all that out, like, within my family. I probably have to track down, like, my grandfather's birth certificate and, like, my mom might have to become a Czech citizen. I got to figure it out. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, so, like, our friend uh, Mike, um, he, he wanted to become a citizen of Malta. Malta. And so his his grandparents were from Malta, so in order for him to get it, he had to have his dad become a citizen first. And so begin then when his dad became a citizen, then that gave him the opportunity to become a citizen. So he did that. Yeah. So now they're both Malta citizens. I've gotta, I have to prioritize that. It's, I don't know if Malta is part of the Schengen zone or not. I don't know. I don't know. But it's kind of, it's a pretty small island, so. Right. I don't know. Well, but. That is the plan going forward. You excited about it? Oh, yeah. The men has been at the top of my list. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to do that flotilla in Croatia and explore Italy. And I romanticize it. I, th I just think it sounds so charming and well, hey, I love Europe. If, if you guys listening or watching are interested, uh, we are doing a, a flotilla in Croatia, July 13th through 20th. I'll put a link in the description. I think you can do it by the cabin or by the whole boat. The cabins go anywhere from three to five thousand dollars for the week or uh, i believe you can get a boat anywhere from like eight to eighteen thousand depending on if you want a monohull or a cat or something like that so uh we'd love to have you come sail with us yeah so it'll be fun yeah flotels i've on, been on have been fun yeah all right well anything else you want to cover here gosh i don't know um not really we talked about our Coming plans. I'm sure once we end the podcast, I'll think of a few things I want to tell sure. everyone. But well, all right, it is uh, maybe siesta time a little bit. Chill out for a while, and then go into town and paint it red or something, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> provision? Yeah. No, yeah. we don't need a provision. So much We're leaving. For the no wake zone, Mister Fairy. Mister Fairy. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please uh, like and subscribe. You can get this podcast wherever you get your audio podcast or on YouTube. Uh, please give us a review on there if you don't mind doing that. That'll really help us out. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.